think of, I don't know of any human being, if you want to bring Nostradamus or the, the Jehovah's Witness or anyone that you want to, that have made predictions of the future with this many, with this much frequency and detail, which have actually materialized in the way that they've materialized. Sounds good. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So here when we say we have evidence for the veracity and the truthfulness of Islam, we're not just saying that we have uh, kind of superfluous evidence or kind of arbitrary subjective type evidences. Our evidences are probably, uh, are, are actually um, can be um, analyzed objectively. Do you see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. This is not regarding the fact that the Quran is also in and of itself a book that claims that it has no contradictions. A book that challenges mankind to produce a chapter like it. A book of the... We would actually make the argument that the only religious, ancient religious book, ancient religious book which has been preserved in terms of its, 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 its material, its corpus. We've never, the Muslims have never had a controversy and this can go on the record and believe me, I'm here every week and people try and, they'll try and uh, maybe, but I can say this completely clearly. The Muslims have never had a controversy on what constitutes the Quran. Never. It's never happened. They've had controversies on everything else, but they've never had a controversy on what constitutes the Quran. The Christians, all right, on the other hand, they are differing on how many, how many books are in, uh, in, in the biblical canon. The, the Protestants say 72 books, the Catholics say, sorry, the Protestants say um, 66, the Catholics say 72, the Eastern Orthodox say 81. So here, we don't even know how many books are in the, in the Bible, let alone the manuscripts and these things. So here, what we're saying is not only do we have evidences that are analyzable, if that's a word, but also we have that which is necessary for a book to be a word of God, a preserved book, f free from contradiction and unimitable. Uh, so with that, do you, do you see the power of the, um, the, uh, the argument? Yeah, uh, no, I, I believe that it's a bit like, uh, you know, you, when you buy a software for the first time and you install updates, yeah. it's like uh, Christianity came along, that was one update, and we've had Islam, that was yeah. the final. Yeah, I think that's a good way. The thing is that uh, we, 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 uh, the, pro the only problem was, yeah, yeah. in any religion, is violence, as you know. Yes. Uh, we've always seen this violence uh, in, in all religions. I'm not trying yeah. to blame any. Yes, yeah. Uh, I think that the only problem is that uh, the thing that uh, people blame Islam for yeah. Yeah. is uh, well, why are they so violent in that yeah. area? Yeah. There is, you know, they have to kind of look at themselves. You're, say, you're right. The Western intervention, we also have to exactly. look at the. Exactly, you know, the, the, you know, That area of the world has been a kind of hodgepodge of different civilizations. Like you had Rome to the west, you had the Mongols, the Arabs, right. all competing, going, yeah. uh, and, uh, and of course that violence is very harmful to uh, empiricism and it causes yeah. arguments, you know, Shia, Islam, Sunni, Islam. Yeah, but, okay, I, I accept what you're saying, you're right, violence is never a good thing, but that's just... Uh, I, I, that's what I'm saying. In defense of Islam, mm, yeah. when people accuse Islamic world of being so violent, yeah. look at the cultural context here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if we look at the raw data, uh, you'll find that in terms of population, I would actually make the argument that Islam Muslim people, as a proportion of the population, are probably the least violent. I know that sounds ridiculous. In the last hundred years, they have proven to be the least violent people in the world in terms of religion. Why? And well, this is going to sound ridiculous. Some guys laughing their head off in, at home there, believe me. But if you count the amount of people that have died as a result of the imperialistic wars of uh, World War One, World War Two, also if you count the four wars of America, and if we consider state violence as a kind of violence, which we sh there's no reason for us not to, we'll come to the conclusion that the most violent people have been atheists like Stalin and others, and um, Christians. If you consider Hitler a Christian, I don't know why he considered himself, and people like him and so on and so forth. Islam actually fares quite reasonably and in the grand scheme of things uh, as a, pro a proportion of the population, especially if we talk about the colonial period because most of the Muslim world was subjugated under the colonial Western rule, it fares actually quite well. But having said that, because of per kind of the post-Cold War terroristic um, backlash that we've been getting yeah. and the, uh, the focus on terrorism, so a lot of people now will think of Islam as a violent religion. But we shouldn't think, just looking at the raw data of Islam as any more or less violent as other world faiths who have proponents of those faiths actually performing more, more violence uh, in, the, in the span of the last 100 and 150 years uh, than Muslims. 
But going back to what I was saying, I was saying that, look, we have an argument for um, basically the, the truthfulness of Islam. Yeah? I'm not going to lie to you. I believe, I just want to be straightforward with you. Yeah, because I like you, you know, you're a nice guy, you dress well, you know, I came here, not, I didn't even, I didn't even dress properly today, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I just came, uh, you know, I, I was going to, I was going to come, I, I wasn't going to come today, but I'm happy I did because I had a conversation with you, yeah? Listen to me. I'm going to tell you directly, I believe that the purpose of life is to worship God through submission. Not only is that the case, I believe that the guidelines for human beings is therefore the Quran because it's the final book for the reasons I've mentioned. So if we want to live a fruitful life which is in, in compliance with the will of God, it's got to be done through the injunctions of uh, the Quran and the Sunnah. Now, I've given you the reasons why, like I've given you somewhat of an epistemological base as to why we believe in what we believe. Do you accept that that epistemological base that I've given you is an argument which can be accepted or should be accepted uh, based on the evidence that's put forward. I agree completely. Oh. I think that unless someone comes up with a more up-to-date uh, version of truth, uh, theological truth, yes. I suppose you know, uh, it can make sense to accept that as the most up-to-date. Uh, Fantastic. So what we can do is we can do the Shahada, right? <laughs> now the Shahada, that, is the declaration of faith. Now you believe in, do you believe in what I've just said? Do you, do you agree that the Quran is probably the word of God based on what I've told you? Uh, yeah. Okay, so what you do now is you, uh, it's good now to become a Muslim and what the word Muslim actually means is someone who submits their will to God. As we've said in the beginning, that's the whole point of it. And what I'll do is I'll give you my number and me and you will discuss more like, you know, how to kind of perform your rituals and these kind of things. We'll get you a, a package of things to do and watch and stuff like that. We'll take it easy on you. But how do you feel? Should we go for it? Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't call myself not a Muslim. I'm already practicing uh, Muslim in many respects. So yes. it's nothing new for me. But I would very, very much uh, like that. Yeah. yeah. Would you like that? Okay, let's do it then. So I'm going to say in Arabic, you, you answer, or you just kind of follow what I say. And then I'll say in English, okay? Yeah, you say, say yeah I'll say in Arabic first. Okay. So follow what I say. Ashhadu. You have to say in English. Yeah, I'll say in Arabic and then you say in Arabic. And then, shall I say in English first? No, you say in Arabic. Yeah, okay, English. fine. All right. So, all right. So, say, Ashhadu. Okay, what, is, what does it mean though? First? Oh, okay. Then. No, no, you can't, uh, I, I can't say it. Oh, all right, right, sorry, sorry. I'll say it first. So, what you're going to say is, I bear witness that there's only one God worthy of worship, being submissive to, which is, okay, okay. we believe, the God that we've talked about. Yeah. yeah, and that the Prophet is the final messenger. Okay. Yeah, okay. Ashhadu. Allah, Allah. Ilaha, Ilaha. Illallah, Illallah. Wa Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Take me! Well done, well done. Now, now you're part of the family, my friend. Welcome to Islam. Thank you. Thank you. Well now... <laughs> Nice to meet you on Eid as well. You accept Islam, mashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Well, we're all here, brothers and sisters. No sins on your slate. No sins on your slate. So now you're. Every week somebody. Alhamdulillah. Every week somebody. Listen. MashaAllah. I tried on a video and he ended up in Islam. Every single week of blessings. Alhamdulillah, we keep it going, man. We keep it going, guys. And contribute to it. Alhamdulillah, listen. I'm going to give you my number off camera. <laughs> and then you can call me for anything you need, yeah? And by the way, we're probably going to get something to eat afterwards, so you're definitely invited. Today's Eid, by the way, it's one of the extensions of Eid, so you're already in a Muslim celebration, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, do you want me to give you my number? Have you got your phone with you? MashaAllah. Smart man. Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, it's on Alaikum, man, to the camera, bro. Assalamu alaikum, man. Make sure to subscribe to the guy's page.